Hi, I'm Nora the Lekker Queen. I've got my philodendron Florida ghost here with me. This baby is a beauty. I am going to be giving it a makeover. I am going to be A, adding another plant to this moss pole so that it can be even more bushy than it is at the moment. Extending the moss pole because that plant has reached the top of its moss pole and needs that pole to be extended. I am also going to be taking this plant out of this 14 centimeter pot and putting it into a much larger self watering pot that will be able to help this plant grow bigger, bigger and bigger. I will then also be adding some aeration to the reservoir of this plant. I have heaps of things to do and I'd love it if you kept me company. Let's get started. Got this little plant here. This is another Florida ghost that I'm going to attach to this moss pole so that my plant has got two plants growing in there and it's just going to look ever so lush. I've had this plant for a few weeks actually. It was living in soil and I've had it going through the long method of soil to lecker transition. So it's been living in this propagation jar. And if you're not sure what I mean when I say the long method, just click on the link above and that'll take you to it. But what I want to show you is since I've had this plant, look at that. It's actually got a new leaf on the way, but I wanna show you what its roots have been doing. Look at that, that right there is a lovely new water root. Look at how fuzzy that is. That's another new water root. But look at the little secondary roots as well. All these little white ones, this is a secondary root that's come from this soil root over there. So all the soil roots have now developed secondary roots and this plant is ready is very ready to live in a hydro environment and is very ready to go into Lekka. So I'm really excited. Okay, so I grab my plant and this is, it's in my 14 centimeter pot there. First thing I need to do is actually get the plant out of that pot. Very, very gently squeezing that. Ooh, I mean, just look at that. There are roots everywhere. Oh, this is going to be really hard. Oh, there we go. That there is my plant. Oh, I wish you could smell this. Oh, that smells so, so good. What I am going to do though, is some of these roots, like take a look at this one. This is one of the roots that was dangling outside the pot. Look at this bit, you know, I might just cut some of those off just to make sure that the roots that are going into my new pot are all viable and I'm not gonna have any dead or dying roots anytime soon. Got my pre-sterilized scissors and I'll just chop some of those. That one there as well, just chop that. That there is what my plant looks like. That's looking really, really good. I have to be very careful because I don't want to damage any of my gorgeous leaves. So I'll grab, grab my plant and I'm just making sure that the root system of this plant is going to be in there. So it's just about there, that's where I place it, that's where the roots are and that's where I want this one to be. And I'll grab my plant tie, my Velcro plant tie and just fix this little baby. I don't want to nip any of the leaves. So just making sure that you're only fixing this to the stem and not the leaves. Get that in there like that. Okay. So as you can see, I now have my new plant attached to my old plant. That's my plant there. That's my new plant over there. And that is now attached to the pole with my old plant. Next up is I am going to repot this plant. This is the pot that I'm going to put this plant in. And this is a Lechuza self watering pot. I'll give the details of the pot in the description below. 
But one of the things I have done to this pot, I have kind of modified it and I've put some ventilation holes through that pot just to make sure that my roots, they're getting as much air as they possibly can. So I didn't like the fact that it's got no, I mean, it's got some at the bottom there, but you know, that's really in my mind, just for the nutrient solution to have access to the medium in the pot. So I thought I might as well make some ventilation holes. I've made a hole on this pot. It doesn't matter where you make it. I've just, I just made it in a random spot. And what this hole is going to do is it's going to enable me to put my air stone through to the reservoir. So you can see that's going to go through there and hopefully that's going to work. But that is a hole that I've had to make before I start doing the whole potting up process. I've been thinking about this for quite some time and I'm hoping that I've got the whole thing down pat. So anyway, that's what it is. Before we pot though, I have my metal rod here. This is the metal rod that I'm going to use when I'm extending the moss pole. Now I need to make sure I know how much of this metal rod is going to go inside my pot. So I have to do that measurement. This is my pole there and I know that that's how much I'll need. So I'll put a rough guide so it's about there. That's how much I know is going to be in my pot. So I've got my cable tie there just to help me know where I need to attach my moss pole to this metal rod. Okay, so now that I have all that sorted, I actually need to attach this metal rod to my plant before I can pot it up in that pot. There's just so many steps to this process. It's, it's quite exhausting, but it needs to be done. Uh, it just makes so, many, so much easier if you can do it before you start mucking around with pots. So I'll bring you down and I'll show you how I do that. So I know up to here is going to be inside the pot. So my plant is going to start going from here. So I know I need my roots to be on this way. So I'll grab my plant and when I turn it around like this, I want all this to be inside the pot. So I now attach this metal rod to my moss pole. I've got some cable ties here and I will just put those through and put that down for a second. And I will just secure that. So this metal rod is now secure and held on to my moss pole. I'll just put more around the length of that metal rod and moss pole. This is a very important step. When you get to the top of your moss pole, when you're attaching your metal rod to the moss pole, you want to make sure you leave a few centimeters from the top. So I will be putting mine over there. And the reason you do this is when you get to the stage where you're extending your moss pole, the new moss pole that you've got is going to go over the top of this old moss pole and sit on the outside of it. So this one will be on the inside and the new moss pole will be on the outside. So you want it to be able to slide in. But if you put your cable tie too close to the top, it won't be able to slide in. I hope that I've clarified that and it's not too confusing. So there, my moss pole is now attached to the metal rod. This is my lecker in here that's been pre-soaking in Clonex Clone Solution. I will get my plant. Stand it up there. I need to be able to see that indicator and I'll just start to fill that up with lecker. This is my plant here. It's looking really, really good. That pole is steady. I don't, I'm not supporting it in any way. My hands are over here. It's looking pretty good. I haven't done oh, touch wood 
any damage to any of the leaves. So, so far this is going really, really well. This over here is the little hole that is going to have my air. This here is the hose that is going to connect to my air pump. So I've got my air pump hose coming through there. And that will be attached to my air stone that's going to be living in the reservoir. So that's good. And now that I've got that sorted, I can actually finish topping up the lecker in this pot. That's my pot there. And it's got that lecker in there. My plant is stable. This is going really well. So we're now going to go to the next phase of this and I am going to extend that moss pole. So this here is a moss pole that I made earlier. It's just a normal cylindrical round moss pole. It's not one of my fancy plastic sheet back ones. And if you haven't seen how I make my moss poles, just click on the link above and that'll take you straight to it. I didn't want to do that in this video because we have a lot to get through as it is. I am now going to put this on top of this moss pole and attach it to the metal rod and uh, pray that it stands up straight. This is the side of the moss pole that I want to put on top of this one. This top moss pole is about a square or two. And when I say square, I mean these little squares that form the mesh. It's about a square or two larger than the one at the bottom. And that's because I want this one to slip onto that one. The one at the bottom is going to slip into the one at the top. So making sure you've got the side of your moss pole that's got all the cable ties facing the back and just really gently getting that in. Just very, very gently. And you can bend that bottom one. You can just squeeze that in to help with that if you need to. And that's what I'm doing because I don't have all day for this. Okay, that looks, that looks good. That looks attached. That looks very attached. Okay, so now, now what I need to do is attach this moss pole to the metal rod. That's the first thing, and that's what's going to provide that initial stability. And I'll generally start from the top doing this because at least if you can secure it from the top, then it can be steady. I'm telling you guys, this, this is something that is just not for the faint hearted. So I've put the first cable tie and it's steady. So all I'm doing now is making sure that that is completely secured to the metal rod. That's my moss pole, absolutely fabulously extended. I am so well pleased. Now, the next thing that you can do is, you know where you've got that connection between the two moss poles, where the two moss poles meet? You can attach cable ties there just to further strengthen that bond. I normally don't do this because I think it's just, you know, there's no need. I mean, it's slipped in, what more do you want? It's not going anywhere. So of course now I'll just clip off the redundant bits of cable tie and my baby will be beautiful. She's glorious. She's absolutely glorious. Her pole has been extended. Thank God I didn't damage the new leaf that's coming through. I'm really wanting this plant to take off in a major way and do some serious growing this spring. So one of the things I'm doing is giving it continuous aeration. And I'm going to do this by attaching an air stone. This is a, this is a little air stone that I've got that I'm going to attach to an air pump. So I'm gonna have an air pump running for a few hours a day, and that's just going to be constantly replenishing the oxygen in my nutrient solution. One of the major problems with using semi-hydroponics as opposed to using active or full hydroponics is the fact that that nutrient solution is still, it's not active, it's not moving, it's not getting reoxygenated. So one of the ways you can actually 
get oxygen and air into your nutrient solution is using an air stone. So remember that little hole that I made in my pot? I put, I run my cable through and I attach that to my air stone. I've also got a little valve here. And what that valve does is depending on where, what level I put my air pump at, I'm not having nutrient solution going to my air pump and having that stop working. So I'm not quite sure how this is going to work with my Lechuza pot, to be honest. I didn't try it because, you know, I like to be surprised. I like to try things live on air, as it were, and have them work and you get a genuine surprise, a genuine reaction from me. And then that's good if it works out. But if it doesn't, that's really bad. So I've got my air stone attached to my valve and that's going through to my cable, my cable that's going to go to my air pump. Let's do this. This is my Lechuza pot that my plant is going to sit in. And this is what's going to be the reservoir for my nutrient solution. What I want is that air stone to be sitting somewhere there at the bottom and it's going to be oxygenating that plant. This, this is where having an assistant would be really handy, guys. Anyone who lives in Melbourne, southeast suburbs of Melbourne and wants to volunteer to be my assistant, that would be great. Okay, now. Okay. Ha! I got that in. Before I fire up the air pump, I actually need to fill this reservoir with nutrient solution. And I am going to be filling this up with foliage focus because this plant is good for foliage focus and that will get it growing and keep it on its growing path. So I'll fill that up with foliage focus and then we'll put on the air pump. I got two liters of foliage focus in this jug and I'm going to put that in my reservoir. The thing that's really lovely about Lechuza pots is that they've got this little compartment that you can use to fill your reservoir. So all you need to do is just pour that in there and watch that little red indicator mark. And it starts to rise and rise and rise and it tells you what level your reservoir is at. So that is now telling me, not yet full. That right there is showing me that it's at its maximum level. My reservoir is full. This is my little air pump here. It's just a tiny air pump. It's, it's a double one because I wanna have two plants attached to it. It's got two and it's got a little adjuster so you can actually change how much it bubbles, so to speak. It's not too loud, it's pretty quiet. It's not too bad for a little project like this. I'll just put some links in the description below. This is the cable that is coming from my plant. This is attached to my air stone and I just put this through on my pump. I just secure that to my pump and turn it on and hope it works. I've turned on the air pump. I can hear the air going through. I think it's working. I really think it's working. That is it's absolutely fabulous. There isn't too much sound coming from the pump. I can actually hear the nutrient solution becoming aerated. How fantastic is that? If you're liking this video, please, you gotta like it. You gotta hit the like button because I would like as many people to see this video as can. And YouTube will only recommend it if people are actually liking it. So if you like it, please click the like button because this is just fabulous. I am loving what I have created. It is, I just, I've been dreaming about this in my bed for so long. Spring is here and I finally got the chance to do it. And I'll tell you what we've done today. We have added a new plant to my Florida ghost. We have extended the moss pole, pointed it up into a bigger pot and the ultimate giving it an aeration pump and so that nutrient solution is getting aerated and this plant will grow. Yes, 
Thank you so much for sticking around with me. If you have, I'd really love to know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments. Please let me know in the comments below. This is the first time I've done this, so I have no idea what's gonna happen, how long I need to run the pump for, all that kind of thing. This is just my tiny foray into full hydroponics. Uh, I hope that's not gonna be me in a few years, but I'm really, really excited and I'm really interested to see if there's any gonna be any change in growth with this plant. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Thank you, bye. bye.